I don't know where to start Amanda, with that. I'm names. four or five or six months pregnant, <laughs> and I live in the woods. <laughs> I sent a snapshot of myself to my sister saying, barefoot, unemployed, <laughs> pregnant, living in the woods. <laughs> I, I don't know if I can follow that. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to say, I'm Chris I support this woman. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I support I'm this woman. No, it's his fault. So actually, yeah. that's not it. <laughs> You are to blame. I have shoes. You actually are responsible for all of this. The yeah. house, you know, he the pregnancy, like, I have shoes, the unemployment. Yeah. I, have, I'm not I have shoes, I have a job, I'm not pregnant, and I also live in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I grew up here, um, is, the, is the short version. Um, and then I met you. Yeah, that's the short version. <laughs> you got drug, drug around. <laughs> I, got, yeah. I got out here somehow. It's a long hike. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, so the longer version is I grew up here. Um, moved away, went to school, and then uh, came back after my dad died because somebody had to take care of the place. So this is this is the house that I grew up in. And we're somebody. And we're somebody. <laughs> so we're taking care of the place. Um, and we really didn't have any other plan either. We were just you know we had gone back from the sailing trip and we're like we should have some kids and this is where he grew up so we knew it would sort of work. So yeah. You know. um, Although it's getting harder. There's a, there is a better story than that. I'm not quite sure how to tell it exactly. But um, How we ended up out here? Yeah. Um, because we don't live in a conventional life and we don't want to. That's, that's the better that story. That is what it yeah. is. Uh, like, like, we got back from the sailing trip and I didn't know We couldn't what. go back to nine to five jobs, which just would kill us. Like, it's just crushing to... <sighs> yeah, it's just... Everybody knows. It's just crushing. Nine to five with a, a week's vacation. There's not a single job around here. Yeah, unless you want to work 40 hours a week. <laughs> he that. built the guest house. That's yeah. what the in-between was. That's true. That is exactly right. So we, so we came back from the sailing trip. I, like as I mentioned, I decided that as soon as we got back, I had to figure out how to do something remotely. So I was living in San Diego. No, well, we, we built we that were, place. We, we were building that place. Over the, you know what it was? It was the the little cabin, the original place that Rick built, was like melting into the ground, just rotting. And so we were like, well, we need to rebuild the little cabin. And then we, it kind of snowballed into this thing. It was so cute. Rick used to call, that's Amanda's house. <laughs> because it was supposed to be this little cabin, this little tiny food storage place, but now it's, it's obviously not. No, it's this not. Grand, grandiose 12 it's by 12 adult, mansion. <laughs> the adult house. We mocked it up and... And it just got to be nicer and nicer, and we got excited. You know, it's not exciting to have a project, so we came out and built that. And uh... it was a nice, it was a nice bookend of the sailing trip. To finish the sailing trip, we hadn't gone back to work yet, so we came out, built that place. Um, that and was. You were learning to be remote. Yeah. Well, I hadn't started work yet, so we we had just come back from the sailing trip, and I hadn't like gotten employed yet. So we came out and we built that place with Rick. Um, and then I started doing the my training at my job to do remote stuff, and then uh, Rick died, and and that was unexpected. Like, yes, <laughs> we we didn't plan. We we had come up here and said, "Oh, that was so fun. That was a great summer. That was awesome. What are we gonna do? You know, how, how, we actually were becoming more like, how are we gonna get back on a boat? But then when Rick died, it seemed almost it wasn't really even a question. It was just, oh, it's, it's funny. I guess it's, it's one we're of those coming things. up here. We've had, we've had a few things in life yeah, where say, we don't even talk about it, which is like, oh, that's so obviously what you're going to do. Yeah. You're going to come be up here. I don't actually remember a time when we sat down and we're like, I guess we're moving back. Yeah, there must have been that time, but I don't remember. I don't remember that either. Um, but yeah, after, I mean, somebody's, this place requires a lot of upkeep, um, so it's not really possible to just Well, live. especially as, as Rick had left it. I mean, it was there was a lot of rot going on. The place is forty years old and it's on creosote pilings. It was on creosote. It was. It was. But like I said, there's a lot of work to do. So we, you know, we've done the foundation. We've rebuilt the sauna. And we've rebuilt the outhouse. And we've rebuilt the little cabin and built the guest house. And God knows the roof is the next thing. And our son was two months old. The first time we came the back. The first here. time we came back here, like to live permanently. It was also freezing. So we got we got here from San Diego. We left San Diego. It was 80 degrees. We got here. It was like 15 below. Yeah, I was going to say 20 below. And I'm like, yeah, how, like do this you, was a mistake. how do you wrap up a baby, baby, baby <laughs> two, yeah, two without suffocating him? Yeah. Oh, two month old. Yeah. That's um, crazy. So it's a, the winter trail is different than the summer trail. So we got here um, in the very early spring because that's when we do all of our hauling to get everything in. We can um, take the winter trail with the snow machine, snowmobile. 
Depends on where you're from. Alaska, we say snow machine. But yeah, the guys did, I do all the grocery shopping, the guys do all the hauling. It takes about a week to get all the firewood and all the building materials, all the groceries. I mean, uh, to, to be totally honest with you, like to really be real about the first week, it was just bizarre to be here without my, my you know, without Rick. Yeah. Um, to have, like, it was just the place felt haunted to me. And it also felt like there was so it much. It was weird without the dogs. Yep. That was, to go outside and there not be anybody panting, barking, howling, nobody, like, getting your, trying to get your attention. It was just quiet. Really quiet. Yeah. And it was dark. Um, yeah, and we had a two-month-old. Yeah. So, um, but at the same time, super familiar, right, because it's a place I grew up in. Yeah, I wish I could tell people, like, the smell. You guys didn't get the smell because we've been here, but when you first walk in here... <laughs> you just got our smell. <laughs> funk, people funk. But when you walk in after the house has been empty for, I don't know, it doesn't even take that long for that smell to come back, maybe four days. It's just a super nostalgic, really, it's the wood smoke, and the, you can still smell the dogs, which is always one of these weird things. Like, it's on the cloth, it's on the rugs, it's everywhere. So you walk in, and it's just it's overwhelming. And, and it was really raw. I mean... I still miss Rick and... You know what's funny yeah. though? When we moved back, he'd been dead for a year, almost. It's a year's not a long time when your dad dies. It's just not. Um, and this place was so him. I mean, this was his life dream. Like, this is his life work. And you're living in it. And every log, you can look at the the marks and be like, oh yeah, you know, this is, this is where, you know, we were playing this game and we bonked it, or <laughs> we broke the window or, you know, there's so many stories behind every little detail in the house so you can't get away from the memories and stuff it's just, it's not like you moved into a new apartment and then everything's painted white it's like this place has so much so many stories i mean having a kid is like nobody can really really truly prepare you for it you can hear about it but it's like you think you know and you have the kid and you're like oh that's what they meant <laughs> it's just very odd <laughs> they weren't schism. kidding you really are going to get no sleep that's a real thing <laughs> that's a real thing <laughs> from the second they're born it's not like you go through 50 hours of labor, then you get to nap, and then start being a mom. You're like, there, you're on it. No, I think the biggest thing for me, um, it's hard because this is a family place. So you're always checking in with the brothers, like, okay, we're thinking of doing this. What do you guys think about that? Um, but one of my, I had to have a washing machine. Like That was one of those things. I'm like, I'm going to be a mom, and I need, I heard there's a lot of laundry. And I, I, I had done laundry by hand for the previous three years on the boat. Like, right. no. Laundry by hand, your hands are just raw. It's, I mean, people, sometimes you hand wash your delicates, but when you're washing a sweatshirt or jeans by hand, like multiple times a week, I was like, no. And I think that was the hardest and the weirdest thing. And then for you, it was the stove. Mm -hmm, yeah. So the, the, the big, it's the combination of it being a family property and having Rick have, you know, be gone within a year of us coming back is it feels like it's supposed to be a museum and you're not supposed to change anything um so every change that we made felt weird and rick was not particularly proactive so there hadn't been a lot of changes in the last 30 years so we changed a lot fast i, know, I feel it's... bad it must be weird janus for you and for us to come back and be like the, everything looks so different i mean we've rearranged a lot the, like the baby gate right like that really divides up the space in here. Um, we actually took down a wall upstairs um, where Rick's office was. We've opened up that space. That's, you know, it's just, and we've gotten more solar panels. We've made it way more comfortable. Like the washing machine, snow machine. The, the snow machine. Yeah. Well, the, so without the dogs in the winter, it's modern convenience is creeping into this, you know, old fashioned lifestyle. You know, people are like, oh, you live off the grid. You must be subsistence farmers. I'm like, no, we still go to the grocery store. It's just yeah. more of a schlep. The, just for the record, we do not live off the grid. Like, <laughs> we do not. We are not hooked into the electrical grid and the sewage grid. Otherwise, yeah. we are completely on the grid, right? Like, <laughs> I, I rely on an income from a very on the grid company. Like, we get all our food from the grocery store. We, well, almost all our food from the grocery store. Like. Let's be clear about that and not over-romanticize this off-the-grid stuff. We just have a really fucking far-ass hike to get into. <laughs> can, can you explain the hike real quick? Like the process from you drive your car up, you get out of the car, and you start. So we parked on the side of the road. Like literally the side of the road. And mm -hmm. you get your boots on, and maybe it's buggy, so you get your head net on, and whatever. You get your gear on. 
Put all your groceries in the pack. Put all your groceries in the pack. Put your kid in the pack. Yeah. So you've got, you know, anywhere between a 45 and a 60 pound pack. And then you just trudge through the woods over some sloughs, depending on if the beavers are bad that year or not. They're better or worse. If it's rained, it's better or worse. Um, through the tall grasses. I, I don't know if nobody's, if these are people who have not been to Alaska, the grasses literally are head high in the summer. Like it's, so if it's rained, you're just wet. But it's not all miserable. It's beautiful. I mean, you got the creek and you got the wildflowers, and it, it can be just, you know, spectacular and magical. So you walk um, through the woods, making a lot of noise so the bears don't get you. <laughs> you know, see the random porcupine or moose, uh, spruce hen, and then you get to the tundra, and that's like walking on a sponge. And so you do that. That's about halfway, and then uh, you know, a couple beautiful tundra lakes, and then back into the woods again. And then just when you think you're about to die, you can see the house. And it's totally worth it. So <laughs> I think that's about accurate, right? Yeah, that sums it up, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, or at least sums, sums up the summer trail. The winter trail is completely different. Yeah. Winter trail. Yeah. Is uh, the snow machine. Yeah, I mean, we're cheating now, right? The winter mm -hmm. trail used to be dog sled. And the snow machine is just never hard, right? Like, the snow is three feet and it's still not hard. It's hard when it, it's cold and it doesn't snow like last year. Such a bummer. And there's ice on the lake. And the tundra's a solid rock. But you still have to walk that summer trail until the snow falls. So And the snow has, it has to be pretty deep because of the sloughs and things. But we have the winter trail. Yeah. So, mm, so that's just getting on the machine and driving, hooking up the sled. You tow your stuff in and go. It's easy. It takes about 45, it's about 45 minutes in the winter. And it's about two hours in the summer. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. Um, and then when you get here, there's there's nothing here, right? There's, there's nothing here. There's, what do you mean? Well, I mean, there's no neighbors. There's no. Oh, yeah. There's no nothing. It's just, no. Which, Actually, and that's I think about that all the time, man. That's that's been one of the, when we after we built that place. I I think for me it was going on the sailing trip and have that having that be kind of my big adventure in my. I think I was 30 when we left, so basically my late 20s. Rick moved out here when he was 28, I think. So I had, I just had that kind of understanding. A parallel. Uh, yeah, that parallel. And it was the first time that I really connected with the fact that he got here, and there was nothing here, right? It was like he, it was just like stopping anywhere else in the woods and being like, okay, this is it, you know? Um, and because uh, to me this feels like a place it's a destination it's home right you get to the end of the trail and there's the cabin and the house it's like, is already built yeah it's um, already wired up solar panels are already here yeah um so i n after going through that experience i still it's it is almost every time now i get here and it feels like oh this is this is it, this isn't any different than 100 yards down the trail the other direction. This is just part of the woods where it felt, it used to feel like an end point, I guess, which is kind of cool in a way, I think. And you're, you know, you get familiar with your surroundings so quickly. You know, when you move into a new place and it takes you a couple, maybe a month or two, but after that you wake up at night and you don't need to turn the light on to go to the bathroom. You, just, you know, you can count the steps. You don't even have to count, you feel the steps. It's the same thing where you're just in it and you don't think about it, for me. Every once in a while, it, it will hit you. And it's, it's funny, it's when other people come out that you see it through other people's eyes, and you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> you know, like, oh, yeah. You know, I, I'm doing dishes without water. That's, that's, we have a system, and it totally works for us, but you have to explain it to people. And you're like, oh, yeah, there probably are other ways of doing this. Um, and it's, yeah, it's not until other people come out and you see it. And actually, it's when you see the, that's when you see the mess, too. You're like, oh, oh. Man, this place looks kind of trash. <laughs> like, when, when they leave, we're going to clean that up for sure. And then, you know, you don't. <laughs> I, I totally disagree with everything you just said, except for the best part. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but, but, yeah, no, I, I feel it every day. Like, I, I remember Rick talking about walking around here after, like, the chores were done, kind of looking for something to do just to be outside, and I connect with that every day. I, um, I feel like I will, I'm usually up later, that's like my dad time, so I'll, you know, I, my routine is I do work, then I do Kai, then I do a building project, and then I have, you know, half an hour before I'm going to go to bed, and I always walk around here, I'm just like, 
fucking hate dude. This I'm in the middle of nowhere. This is rad. <laughs> I'll sit on the bench and watch the mountain or just stand in the yard and like try to think of something else that needs to get done because I just want to be outside and it, and I it's constant for me. Um, although it's a weird, it is like I mentioned to you, it, it's a weird dichotomy. Like the instant that I close my computer is like a, it's like the world changes. It's bizarre to be in, in like high pressure corporate America doing like this standard deal and then close the laptop and be like, I'm in the, I'm that's in. probably the difference. I'm just in it all the time. Yeah, maybe. I'm, I'm, I'm busy with Kai basically from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed. And it's, it, I do more of the daily grind where it's like, all right, I'm going to cook and I'm going to clean. And it, it would be the same anywhere. Yeah. You know, if, if my life was on the road with Kai yeah, or if we were, daycare. Kai, he Michael probably over. wouldn't, he probably wouldn't. I mean, kid stays with your mom, you know, whatever. We, we might have a TV. We might have a TV. We might have a date night. We might be able to go see a movie or something. We might but have friends that came over. <laughs> we have friends that came over. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> doesn't happen all the time but I I think it that a lot of moms would relate to that it's like it doesn't matter where you are because you're doing the same thing you're yeah. taking care of your kids you're taking care of your family and you're doing it you know the more people that do this the less space there is to do this every right? once in a while so, so when... it's kind of selfish reasons like and we can feel we we can hear the, the, our closest neighbor every once in a while if he's running his chainsaw you can hear it and it really grates me I'm like oh there's somebody else out here. It's a really... I mean, I can't even see him, right? <laughs> but I hear him. And in the winter, you'll hear snow machines way up off of the mountain, especially if the wind's blowing right. I'm like, ah, oh, I hate that. <laughs> well, it's also very different. Like, it's it's really interesting to me. I've given this this speech a lot of times, but there's there's like a buffer zone of, between glacier and people. And as the glaciers are receding, the people are just coming up, and you can see, right? Like, Wasilla used to be this little bedroom town that was nothing. And now we don't go into Anchorage because Wasilla is sufficient to, to basically meet all of our needs except for the airport. And you can you can feel this influx of human beings. And my advice is stay in the city and don't come. It's awful. You're gonna hate it. <laughs> <laughs> That's just us being kind of mean, though. Um, but but if you're really gonna do it anyway, be sure you have a supportive partner. I think. Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah, don't. Don't do it by yourself. Don't come out here alone. Well. And don't and don't do it with somebody who doesn't actually have the same dream. Cause you just fight about it. They, if they don't want to be here, it won't be fun. I don't. I. I that's a, it's a be, it's a better question that I'm going to give you an answer to right now. So I I reserve the right to come back to that one because it's a good question. That's my advice. If you're thinking about coming out here, be clear about why you're coming out because it's not. It's not. It's probably not what you think it is, and if you think that you're like escaping something, you're not probably. Uh, so just I, you're trading problems for other yeah, problems. Yeah, you're trading problems for other problems. And it's not easy. Like this is my advice. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, just that's it. Be clear about what you're doing and why you're doing it, because it's it's not what you think it is. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I feel like we should clap or something. That was good. That was so good. That was really good.